<coughs> Welcome to another Stuart the Pilot video helping you learn fast about flying. Just kick the camera, start again. Welcome to another Stuart the Pilot video helping you learn fast about flying and today we are talking about the third part in this series, how to land an airplane. Radio Golf Romeo Sierra Kilo Romeo uh, overhead by Haven, 1,700 feet top, 967 uh, request uh, air for information to land. Golf for Romeo Sierra Kilo Romeo 5 uh, radio Roger runway 24 left hand circuit. The QFP 9067 at Pasco and parachuting is finished for today. Runway 24 left hand. QFE of 967 and copied about the uh, Parish aircraft will join for a base leg for Romeo 24. Go off Kilo Romeo. Go off Kilo Romeo, Roger. If you haven't seen the first two parts of the series, head over and watch them now. I'll link them up there. The first one is how to start an airplane, and then I also did one on how to take off. Bits of general tips and tricks that help me, things I wish I'd known when I was learning to fly. If you've enjoyed this series and you enjoy the videos on this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button on the right hand side. Why, why am I getting messages? I usually put my phone on. I get messages on my phone and then it also pings up on the computer. Where are we? If you enjoyed this mini series that I've done, check out my channel. And if you enjoy this stuff and you think it's stuff you're going to enjoy in the future, hit that subscribe button. It's going to help this channel grow and grow and help the quality of all these videos keep improving. So thank you again for all your support. Today we're talking how to land an airplane. I'm not going into specifics about it. You need to speak to your instructor about approach speeds and things he wants you to do technically. When I started learning, I was awful at landings. Really, really bad. I mean, truly, truly dreadful. I mean, I think there was one circuits training where I did, it was like 10 circuits. I must've gone around on six of them. Like I was really, really bad. I just couldn't get the plane on the glide path with the numbers on the windscreen at the right airspeed. I couldn't do it. It wasn't possible. I didn't know how to do it. But then I learned a few things that helped me. There's three big tips I'm going to give you today that helped me massively and now I get my landings right most of the time. Not this one though. That was quite recent as well. So, but then after that I went and did some circuit practice and they were all fine after that. Anyway, when you are coming in on final approach, make sure the aircraft is in trim. Now what I mean by that is make sure you played with the trim wheel enough that you're holding your approach speed. So whenever I fly my approach in a standard flap setting with two stages of flaps, I always make sure I'm trimmed for 70 knots or around 65, 70 knots on final. It just takes all the workload off you. If you're constantly fighting against the, the trim of the aircraft, it's you're using up capacity that you need to be focusing on something else. So let the plane fly itself at the right speed by using your trim. Make sure you're in trim. Can't emphasize that enough. Then when you're coming in on final, the only things you need to be looking at are numbers in the windscreen and your airspeed. Now, when I mean numbers in the windscreen, you want to have the threshold numbers of the runway in a constant position on in your windscreen. Maybe just up from the windscreen so that you can see. And those numbers should be, should be getting bigger and bigger and bigger as you fly closer and closer to the runway. They shouldn't be disappearing up because then you're getting too low. They shouldn't be disappearing below the canopy because then you'll be getting too high. Keep them in the windscreen. And all you've got to be doing is, as you're using the control column to keep them in the windscreen, just keep flicking your eyes between numbers in the windscreen, airspeed. Numbers in the windscreen, airspeed. If you're getting too fast, pull the power back a wee bit. If you're getting too slow, add a bit of power. Now your instructor will probably tell you that if you're too low, you add the power. And if you're too slow, you push down, which is absolutely correct. But every action has a reaction. When you pitch down to get airspeed, you're then gonna to be too low. So you're then gonna to need to add power. So all you're doing is doing it simultaneously. So if you're checking numbers in the windscreen and my approach speed's supposed to be 70 knots and I'm at 80 knots, I'm too fast. I'm pulling the power back. I'm keeping the numbers in the windscreen. I'm watching the airspeed drop. I'm watching the airspeed drop. When I hit 70 knots, I add in enough power to maintain that 70 knots and you should still be on the correct glide path. If you're lucky to be at an airport where they have the PAPI lighting system, you should have two whites and two reds to show you're on the correct glide path. If you've got four whites, you're too high, pull the power back and pitch down for your approach speed, which would be 70 knots. And until you see two white and two red, then you can add some power again, whatever the power setting is for your aircraft on final, that's what you should go for. Yeah, there's four whites, so it's saying we're a bit high. One red. One more red. Red, that's bad. 
And then you just do that all the way over the numbers. Uh, for me, I fly 60 knots, or I try and fly 60 knots over the numbers. Uh, what I mean by that is over the threshold numbers as you come in, and that's when the power pulls back and you begin your flare. And a flare is not a great word for me. Flare sort of sounds like a big, <clears throat> which is not. You're just holding it off. Holding off is a much better term. You just want to have enough back pressure that you're not touching down as yet, and you're just letting the airspeed bleed off. You want to get rid of as much energy as possible when you're crossing the threshold. And you just want to be holding off, holding off, holding off, and just keep, keep pulling back gently so that you're not climbing, but you're not descending. And then once the aircraft's lost enough power, it'll touch down nicely onto the tarmac or grass, whatever you fly on. I think that's everything. I mean, there were the main tips that helped me. I hope they helped you. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please hit that like button. It really helps me out. Subscribe if you aren't already. Any questions or comments, just drop them in the comments box below. I love reading all your comments and I reply to every single one of them. Drop your comments below and subscribe if you aren't already. Hold on, did I do that already? Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that. Like button really helps me out. Subscribe if you aren't already. Any questions or comments, drop them in the comments box below. And I'll see you on the next video.